Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Quarantine Devotionals. It's uh, it's Wednesday, what is it, Wednesday, February the 3rd, 2021, and we are into February. 2021 is rolling, and we're past the first month of January into this wonderful year, the year of all our answers and our deliverance from COVID-19 and all that kind of stuff, and it's, it's uh, we're living the good life now, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the year is not that much different and one day just fades into another and a lot of things don't change. But one thing is for sure, we still have the word of God. We still are able to uh, uh, to meet together like this and to spend some time in God's word this morning. And so we praise God for that. And I'm just thankful that you're here with me this morning so that we can uh, uh, so that we can look at God's word and think about what it is that uh, uh, that we can learn from him today so that we can be made more like Jesus and uh, and be more effective for him and his glory in the world. Well, who's with us so far? Sherry, Sherry, uh, once again, first uh, on the ball. Uh, nice to see you. And uh, Steve, uh, oh, it says, oh, he thinks he beat you, but it doesn't show that on my computer. Oh, that would be a tussle. And Barb Hyman, Barb, it is so nice to see you. Hope that you're doing well. And uh and we know that others will be joining us here uh, soon as well. Well, it looks like a beautiful day outside out here on the uh, the peninsula out in Port Townsend, uh, just out here, uh, you know, still in this rain shadow. Looks like it's going to be a nice day. I think it's going to, oh, I, I still think it's Celsius, but uh, going to be about eight degrees. That's, you know, for winter, that's not too bad. Uh, it's a lot better than Toronto area. Good morning, Carolyn and Ed, and uh, nice to see you guys as well. Well, guys, uh, yes, once again, glad that you're joining me this morning. Um, we're going to get into God's word, but before we do so, one of the things that we need to do, as always, is to come to him in prayer and ask for his help. So uh, so let's uh, go to him in prayer before we get into God's word. <clears throat> let's pray. Lord God, uh, we just want to... We want to see you work in us, Lord. We thank you for a good morning so far. I pray that everyone was, is well slept uh, to prepare us for the day. But to really prepare us, Lord, we want to ask that you would put our hearts in the right place, that our focus would be on living for you and glorifying you. This is why we were created, Lord, to glorify you and to, uh, to enjoy glorifying you forever, to find our purpose and our fulfillment in doing that. But we need hearts and minds that are in the right spot, minds that, like we said on Sunday, are renewed. Uh, and we know that you're doing that, Lord. Every time that we open up your word, you renew us a little bit more. And so that's why we're here, Lord, because we want your glory to be seen in us. We want people to praise your name because of the work that you're doing in us. Uh, whether they be people in our own homes or whether they be people at our workplaces or just people that we meet maybe in the grocery store. We want them to see your glory. And so we pray, work on us this morning. Make us more like Jesus. And then let us, as we end the, even as we end these devotions this morning, we pray that we would go into the world and make disciples. Go into the world with an attitude to make disciples. Let us experience that shift. It's what you made us for, Lord. We pray that you would help us to fulfill it for your glory. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, Polly, nice to see your bodies. And uh, and Molly, too. Hey, nice to see you, Molly. Um, all right, guys. Well, let's get our Bibles open up here to the book of Luke. We're still in Luke chapter 9. And this morning we're going to look at Luke chapter 9. Uh, verse 43b, that means the second half of, half of verse 43 to verse 45. It's just a tiny little section. It's not very big, but it's uh, it's what we want to uh, take a look at this morning. Well, as you're turning there, um, uh, I just want to tell you about a good book, as I usually do. Um, this morning, I'm going to recommend this book. Uh, it's The Holiness of God. I don't know if you can see it there, The Holiness of God. Uh, it's a book by R.C. Sproul, who 
um, has had a huge influence in my life. I know he's had a huge influence in several of your lives uh, and your bodies. They really love R.C. Sproul, and there's good reason for that. Sproul um, just died and passed away a couple of years ago. He's in glory now. Now he sees the holiness of God. Uh, just he's a, He was a great theologian who had um, uh, more than most uh, Bible teachers uh, could take really weighty and uh, and sometimes very complex subjects and make them incredibly understandable in, in just a very short amount of space. And that's what he does in this book, The Holiness of God. Now, this is a weighty topic, perhaps the most weighty of all the topics, just how holy is God. But what Sproul does here is he gives us a glimpse into something that we sometimes don't think too much about. We think of God as a friend. We think of him as loving. We think of him as good and, and all of these kind of things. And we say, you know, even having a sense of humor. But we don't often think about the, the sheer weight of the holiness of God. And because of that, we suffer in the way that we see ourselves, too. Um, and what Sproul does for us is that he, he shows us something of the holiness of God, just how pure and, 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 and magnificent and, and uh, without stain of sin uh, that God is. It really helps us to see ourselves as how fallen we really are. And, uh, and how much we need Jesus, how much we need to be here for devotions like this, but every morning uh, in our Bibles, in our words, so that we can, uh, uh, we can be helped by God and transformed by God. God wants us to be holy as he is holy, but that is a long, long way and a lofty thing to attain. Uh, and a book like this shows us that and helps us to depend and rely on God all the more. So The Holiness of God by R.C. Sproul. Uh, not a big book, um, but just a fantastic book. I know my daughter Evelina was reading it and she uh, really, really enjoyed it. She's only 12 and that, that tells you something about Sproul's uh, ability to write. Um, yeah, check it out. The Holiness of God, R.C. Sproul. All right, guys. Well, Luke chapter 9, and like I said, we're going to look at uh, verses 43b to 45, but I want to start, I want to start at verse 37 in our reading, okay? So let's start at Luke chapter 9, verse 37. It says, the next day when they came down from the mountain, a large crowd met him, met Jesus. <clears throat> Just then, a man from the crowd cried out, teacher, I beg you, look at my son because he's my only child. The spirit seizes him. Suddenly he shrieks and it throws him into convulsions until he foams at the mouth, severely bruising him. It scarcely ever leaves him. I begged your disciples to drive it out, but they couldn't. Jesus replied, you unbelieving and perverse generation. How long will I be with you and put up with you? Bring your son here. As the boy was still approaching, the demon knocked him down and threw him into severe convulsions. But Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit, healed the boy, and gave him back to his father. And they were all astonished at the greatness of God. Now here's our text today. While everyone was amazed at all the things he was doing, he told his disciples, let these words sink in. The Son of Man is about to be betrayed into the hands of men. But they did not understand this statement. It was concealed from them so that they could not grasp it, and they were afraid to ask him about it. Well, as we've been working our way through the book of Luke, Luke and honestly through any of the Gospels, we see that there are different phases to Jesus' ministry while he was here on earth. Uh, for a lot of the book of Luke, Jesus has been performing miracles and he's been proclaiming the kingdom of God through these miracles. But he's begun to shift now when we get to chapter 9 into kind of a different phase of his ministry. And we didn't read the entire chapter, but what you'll notice if you go back is that after performing some miracles, Jesus begins to shift into this talk about um, him being uh, having to die or, or be betrayed and things like that. And he does it again here in these verses that we're reading this morning. But we already read the disciples were not ready to receive it. It says that they were, uh, these things were concealed from them. And I think the point is that they weren't ready for it because they had their eyes focused on 
the wrong things about Jesus' ministry. And that really is the point of what our text is getting to this morning, that we need to keep our eyes focused on the real work of God. Keep your eyes focused on the real work of God. And when, when we do that, God will show us what we need to know. Keep your eyes focused on God's work. And when you do, he'll show you what you need to know. One of the things that the problem, one of the problems that the disciples had here was that they didn't have their eyes focused really on God's true work. They were distracted by all the other great things going on, uh, distracted by the apparent blessings of God. And that's something we need to be careful of too. And that's kind of the first thing that I draw out of this is that uh, don't be distracted by the apparent blessings of God. Uh, not just the parent, they are real blessings, but we need to be careful not to be distracted by, maybe I should put it, the superficial blessings of God. You see, this is what was happening with the people. Like we said, if you go back in chapter 9, Jesus has started to talk a lot about some, some really weightier things here. The fact that he would is going to have to die and be betrayed and things like that. But then, all of a sudden, we see this another miracle happen in verses 37 to 43. And this is why I read this section. Jesus heals this demon-possessed boy. And because of this healing, people are really enamored with it. But they kind of miss the point of what Jesus is talking about in the rest of chapter 9. Sure, when they see um, Jesus heal this boy, they, they're amazed. It says that they were astonished at the greatness of God. So they do see God's work in it. But the disciples and others, uh, they get distracted by this, uh, this miraculous work. And they don't see the deeper meaning of Christ that Jesus has begun to talk about. All they see is this hope of prosperity. And I think this is one of the reasons why Jesus rebukes them. Because they're so focused on this hope of prosperity that they're, they're missing the other things that Jesus is saying. But Jesus' message isn't distracted. He keeps the focus on what is most important. And Jesus, uh, uh, but Jesus talked about these weighty matters and, uh, you know, his death and, and things like that. They're kind of forgotten after this miracle happens. Now look at here. As we go through Luke chapter 9, Jesus says these different things about, uh, um, uh, he asks uh, uh, Peter, who do, who do you say that I am? Peter says, you're the Messiah. You are the true king of God. And then right, that's in verses 18 to 20. And then as soon as Peter says that, he says, uh, uh, Jesus begins to predict his death in verses 21 and 22. And then to add to that, Jesus says in verses 23 to 27, not just my death, but your own life will be demanded of you as well. And this is this is really taking Jesus' ministry and this idea of what the Messiah and the kingdom of God is about into a different direction that the disciples were not expecting. I mean, this is one that, 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 that's pretty weighty. I mean, your life is going to be demanded. The Messiah's life is going to be demanded. And then in verses 28 to 36 in chapter 9, there's this transfiguration where we see Jesus. He didn't just come to do miracles. Jesus is apparently the final lawgiver. He, he goes above and beyond Moses. He, he does away with, with the, uh, the law of the Old Testament. Uh, he's the final lawgiver. And so there's a lot of waiting, weighty things happening, happening uh, up to this point. But then this miracle happens in verses 37 to 43. And everybody's amazed by it. Now, right after that amazement, Jesus goes back to talking about the Son of Man is about to be betrayed into the hands of men. Now, most political leaders and people who are wanting to amass a following would look at verse 43, and, they, and we see they were all astonished after Jesus did this miracle, and they would ride that wave into popularity. You know, I, I mean, uh, you ride the good because that's what people want. That's what's going to bring you fame and, and, and establish you as a leader. But no, Jesus goes right back to this thing about him dying. And he continues on with the theme while others are distracted by things that aren't as important, more superficial. No, not Jesus, though. He doesn't lose focus. And guys, we need to be careful that we're not distracted from the main points of our faith. 
And one of the unfortunate things with God's blessings, I mean, his blessings aren't unfortunate. God's good and his blessings are good, but we take them and we don't use them rightly. We get distracted from the main point of our faith by the blessings of God. You know, many of you listening right now have heard of the prosperity gospel. You know, you may know what that is. This message that we hear from uh, certain preachers, uh, um, uh, guys like Joel Osteen or, or um, um, uh, Stephen Furtick or, or, or folks like that, or, or the Bethel Church movement, um, that, uh, you know, what Jesus came to do was to give us life and, and give it to us abundantly. And, uh, and we can have everything that we want right now. It uh, doesn't mean there won't be some bad things, but, you know, really God wants us to live life to the fullest. And, and that's uh, what Jesus came to do. Well, that's the prosperity gospel. And we know that's obviously bad, or we should know that that's not what the gospel is. And we say, oh, you know what, that's not the gospel we hold. But we need to be careful as well. Because when I look at what is happening in our nation today, in the United States, and in Canada as well, where I'm from, uh, we poo-poo the prosperity gospel, but are we not pretty concerned about a prosperity nation? You know, we say those words, God bless America, but do we mean God bless America in bringing about revival, in bringing people to salvation, regardless of what it takes? Or are we asking God bless America in keeping us first, in keeping us to be the greatest nation, the most affluent nation, the one who sets the standard for all other nations. Uh, God bless America so that, um, so that we can live this lasting legacy of, 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 uh, of wealth and abundance and, and just being the greatest. Guys, I think sometimes as Christians, that's what we're more focused on. I, I think that's what some of this stuff surrounding the last election uh, kind of reveals to us. Um, not that those blessings are bad. Those are good things. It, it's not a bad thing to live a good life and, and, to, uh, and to be happy and those sorts of things. But is that what the faith that Jesus is talking about here really all about? Those are the kind of things the disciples were distracted by. And we get distracted by those kinds of things that really are God's blessings, but we get distracted from, we let them distract us from the real point of the gospel. Well, those are some of the good things that we can get distracted by, but we can just get distracted by the low points as well, the sufferings that we go through, whether they be illness, that can be very distracting to us, um, uh, or depression, that can be very distracting to us, or death, perhaps some of us uh, have lost or we lose those that we love, and that can be very distracting for us. Guys, we need to keep, the point is, we need to keep our focus on the main things. Like Jesus. And Jesus' main things are pretty heavy duty. And we see that here in our text this morning in verses 43 to 45. We need to keep our focus on the main things. What are some of those main things? Like pursuing our relationship with God at all costs. You know, that's what we need to be working on. Not pursuing wealth, not pursuing success, not pursuing financial security. No, pursuing, above all, our relationship with God. Not even pursuing, you know, a good life for our family, and that's a good thing to do, but, but that comes way down on the list. If we are pursuing a right relationship with God, those other things will work themselves out. We need to pursue holiness. That, again, that's what this book by Sproul is about. It's all about pursuing holy living and a holiness of God in our lives to make our lives pure uh, so that when we meet Jesus, we're presentable to him and we look beautiful to him as the bride should look for her husband and Christ is our husband. And another thing that we shouldn't be distracted from is sharing the gospel. You know, one of the things that has been sad to see in, in uh, churches of friends of mine is uh, they've been cut, so caught up in in uh, keeping America great again, so to speak, that that there's been little gospel activity coming from the people in those churches. Um, it, it's I, th I think it happens in every church right now. I mean, obviously we side with 
with uh, with one party more than others, <laughs> uh, you know, and, and that's that's obvious. It's not a bad thing, but guys, is it distract? Are those the kind of things that are distracting us from the gospel that Jesus wants to share? From really sharing the great commission? Listen, if anything is distracting us from fulfilling the great commission, then we know that's not a good thing. So keep our focus on the main things. Jesus wants us to, and that's why he brings his disciples back to these weightier issues and not sticking with just the miracles and signs and wonders. And you know, when we're not distracted by the blessings of God, then God will show us what he wants us to see. And that's the problem with the disciples at this point, at this point anyway. The disciples were so distracted by uh, the unimportant things that they lost their focus on the weightier things, the more important things. And we can tell that from verse 46, the next section of our text. Here we have in our text, uh, verses 43 to 45, Jesus talking about him being betrayed into the hands of men. And what happens in verse 46? Well, they get into a big argument about who of them is going to be the greatest in the kingdom of God. Good grief. It's no wonder they weren't ready for Jesus to show them these things. It's no wonder that it says they couldn't understand this statement. It was concealed from them because their focus isn't ready for the deeper things yet. And it's not on the deeper things. Yet, when the time was right and when they were ready in their hearts, Jesus did show them the deeper things of what their faith was really all about. Guys, are we too distracted? for God to show us the deeper things, you and I? I think, yes, I'll answer it for, for myself anyway. Yeah, I often am too distracted, and I think it's probably the same with you. We get too focused on the things of this life. Like we said, uh, the finances, or uh, um, uh, success, or, 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 or hobbies, or maybe it's TV shows, whatever else. Sometimes it can be even a religious experience. Guys, even this can be a distractor. Maybe you're listening this morning and you're older and church has always been a certain way and uh, we've all heard about this. This is kind of anecdotal uh, and, and you know this is the religious experience that we're used to. But God's doing a newer thing and we miss it because we're so focused on, on church the way that it's supposed to be, right? Or maybe we're younger and the same problem. We have these expectations of this religious experience and yet that's not the way God's God's moving in the church. It's not the way that he's moving. But, you know, we want certain worship songs. We want the newer worship songs. Or maybe we want the older worship songs. Uh, we want to be free to do what we can. Um, and, you know, listen, I don't want to wear a mask. I want to sing. Like I said last Sunday, you know, in those portions where we're not singing, guys, there has been, you know, as we reflect on those songs as they're played, there's a real depth to just sitting there and praying as those songs are prayed. Something that, that we haven't maybe felt in a long, long time. But you know what? We're so focused on certain religious experience, a certain way that the other things are concealed from us because we're just not ready. Listen, God has bigger things uh, that he wants us to take more seriously. But when we're too focused on these superficial things, He's not going to show us the deeper things because we are just not ready for it. In fact, the text tells us here, he will conceal those things from us until we're ready. We need to look to the deeper, more meaty, more real things of the faith. And that's what books like this can help us do. And certainly books like this can help us do. There is only one book that's like this, and it's God's word. If we spend time in it, God will... God will change us to have that proper focus. So turn your focus from the things of this world, from the superficial things, and turn your focus uh, to the things of God's kingdom. And when we do that, God will show us what he wants us to see. He, when we're not distracted by the, by the blessings of God in a wrong way, then God will show us what we want to see. The point, keep your eyes focused on God's real work, and he'll show you what you need to know to live for him, to live for his glory, and to be a, and, and then be used by him in this world. Well, guys, those are just some thoughts. I hope that made sense from Luke chapter 9, verses 43b 
to verse 45. And I hope that was a blessing to you. I know it was a blessing to me. It keeps me in check to make sure that, that my focus is right. Um, I hope that the rest of your day is great. Just a few things that we may want to call attention to. So tonight, if you're from San Juan Baptist Church, we have the prayer meeting at 7 o'clock p.m. tonight. I'll be putting out the link on Facebook and sending out an email. Join us for that prayer meeting tonight. Heck, you don't have to be from San Juan Baptist Church to do that. You can be from anywhere. But join us for that, for that prayer meeting at 7 o'clock Pacific time tonight. Um, guys, this weekend, we have Pray and Go. Our missions and outreach team is starting this new initiative at the church, Pray and Go. I want you to be in prayer about that if you're from our, our church, uh, about getting involved in that as we go out into the community. We pray for different homes. It's exciting, and, uh, and we pray that God will bless that. So Pray and Go. Keep that on your minds. Um, and then any other things? Uh, well, you know what? Just church as normal on Sunday. And we ask that if you're able to make it out to church, if you don't have a compromised immune system or you're, you're, you're able to make it out, then please join your brothers and sisters. It's, you're such an encouragement to them. Let them be an encouragement to you and be blessed by God. Anyway, that's all I can think of. It, listen, if you have something else that's going on, uh, something that maybe your church is doing or something that you'd like to share with us, uh, put it in the messages. Everybody will see that. Um, and if the broadcast has ended, they'll still see it because it'll pop up in their, in their notifications. But let us know what's going on. Well, listen, let's close in prayer and ask for God to take it home for us. Let's pray. Lord God, we want to thank you again for your word this morning. Help us, Lord. Help us to have our focus on the deeper things of God, the things that you really want us to see about what it is to live for you and to follow Jesus. Gosh, you know, these disciples weren't ready for it. And there's a lot of things that we aren't ready for, Lord, because our focus just isn't right. Perhaps we're too distracted by the more superficial blessings that you've given to us and they keep us from experiencing the greater blessing that you have for us. Really the greater blessing of being used by you for your glory. Lord, if that is the case, then fix that in us. And I know it is the case for all of us. Forgive us, Lord, for our sin, for not having the right focus and take us to the place you want us to be so that we can see God bless America or God bless Canada or God bless wherever it is that we're listening from this morning, but not in such a superficial way, in a way that sees people come to know Jesus, in a way that uh, you use us to bring you glory. That's what we want above all. And so we pray this in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Well, God bless, guys. Have a great day. And if we don't see you Sunday or before, then we'll see you next Wednesday back here again for the quarantine devotionals. Bye for now.